I'd like to show you the Oxford limiter. You all know the music is getting louder and louder. It's a fact of life, we're fighting it, but till then, we have to deal with it. My problem is that most tools used to make music louder are offensive or destroy my music, okay? When Oxford came out with the limiter, I really felt like finally I had a way to make my music louder without compromising my work. In digital, we only have so much to deal with, you know? Everybody says, oh, but in digital, you have 144 dBs, 144 dBs of dynamics, at least. I'm like, whoa, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, but we only use like 20, because we use the top 20, because I don't know if you noticed, but if you put the CD on in your car, you're basically like, Ugh, it's so loud, right? Everything is incredibly loud. Why? Because everybody's using the top 6 dBs, top 5 dBs, top 4 dBs of the range. So here's how it goes. If you're familiar with zero VU, are you familiar with the idea of a zero VU? You know VU meter? The thing with the, the old stuff with the needles? Okay. The zero here, the zero here is actually minus 18 scale for most converters. So if you're looking at the meter here, it, you have to think of the old zero is the new minus 18. If you work with Blinks converters, it's minus 16. If you work with RME converters, it's minus 20. But it's in that range, okay? So you're about 18 dBs under maximum. And that's your maximum doesn't get higher than that. That's the maximum. So you have your music here, right? And you have your peak and your dynamic range, you peak and your average levels, and then you raise the level, you raise the level, you raise the level, you raise the level, and then you're gonna hit zero. There is nothing above zero, nothing, I promise. Don't look, it, there's nothing there, okay? So you're gonna get here, and what happens? Well, the Oxford limiter is gonna start tucking your peaks in. It's gonna compress the peaks, limit the peaks, and get you to bring your average level up because there is a difference between peak and average levels. Your average level is how loud music feels. Your peak level is how loud music is. I'll repeat. Your average level is how loud music feels, what you feel when your speakers play to you. And your peak level is how loud music is, which is how much your recorder has to deal with. The difference between the two is your dynamic range. All right? So the game of mastering engineers is to make the music feel louder. So do you want your average level to be closer to zero? Yes? Am I going too fast? Throw something at me if I'm going too fast. Something soft? Okay. Perfect so far. Okay, great. So, so I'm the mastering engineer. I want to make my program material louder. What I'm going to do is I take my average levels and bring them up, which means my peak levels are going to get killed. Yes? Okay. The whole thing is to know how are my peak levels going to get killed. The Arcs Limiter does that very well. It does raise a problem, and this is off topic, but I think it's important. Do you know how loud CDs get today? We can measure CDs, the, the loudness of CDs, by looking at how much, how many dBs are left between the peak and average once you're done. In the 80s, when were CDs? 80s, 90s? I don't know. Like late, uh, say in the 1992, if you had a CD master in 1992, they would be like 14 dBs of dynamic range. 15 dBs, 14 dBs of dynamic range. And then as we got closer to today, that reduced because everybody wanted the CD, everybody wanted the CD louder and louder for no good reason whatsoever, but that's a different discussion. These days, we've reached a point where we hit the mother load, where the new Metallica CD actually hits zero on the first beat of the first chorus of the first song, which means no dynamic range, absolute complete zero, where the actual average is as loud as the peaks, it's the same. And so we can like or not like that, but this is the trend. So if you have to work in that environment, you need tools that let you do that. I personally like my music to sound good. I tend to not do that. But sometimes you don't have a choice. And so I found that the Sonox limiter lets me get more level out of my music without fighting as much. Also, I find that I can use the Sonox limiter on independent tracks, not just mixes. I can use it to make things thicker. And it's very, it's a full-time job to make music sound thicker these days because everything is so perfect Everything is so exactly what you put in. So if you have a thin sounding guitar, you're going to get no love from your converters. But you can get love from the Oxford limiter that will let you make it sound thicker. All right, so listen to this. This is my mix raw. Okay, and I'm going to take my input gain here on the Oxford limiter, and I'm going to keep pushing it. Okay? Don't watch me go. Don't let me leave. Keep going, keep going. Where was I? Or why don't I love you 
I'll go back at the beginning of the song. Don't watch me go. Don't let me leave. So this is becoming a little obscene. I just pushed this 9 dBs. Okay? So if you assume that my mix was about minus 16, because I mixed it on the links with a two bus, that means I'm sitting around minus 16, minus 18, right? And I just pushed it 9, almost 10 dBs, and I had about 10 dBs of dynamics, which means I'm already talking in 2 to 3 to 4 dBs of dynamic with the Oxford. You don't hear that. It sounds good. Let me keep on going. Don't watch me go. Don't let me leave. Did I close the store or did you leave before? Don't watch me go. I'm not 18 dBs. Don't let me leave. Where was I? So it's, it's starting to show a little bit, right? Don't watch me go. Don't let me leave. But not, notice the bottom of the song. The bottom of the song is not collapsing. The bottom is still there. So it's pumping. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back because I'm not one of those guys. I'm gonna go back, but you still hear the whole sound stage in the whole bottom. So let's go back to a more civilized place like here. Don't watch me go. Don't let me leave. That sounds great. Did I so now we're gonna do an experiment that you should always do. <clears throat> when you compare, when you wanna see what a compressor really does to your music, you have to compare before and after at the same level. Most of the time people compress or limit something and then they say, oh, look. Quiet, loud, yeah, I take the loud one. But that's not a good way to do this. The good way to do this is to lower the output and compare at the same level. Don't watch me go. So this is with. Don't let me leave. Did I close the store? Can't have a little more. Or did you leave before? Don't watch me go. So I'm more or less at the same level. So this is my mix, <coughs> raw. What came out straight on my tube us. Don't watch me go, don't let me leave, did I close the store? And this is the same one, squished by the Sonox limiter. Don't watch me go, don't let me leave, did I close the store? Or did is that pretty amazing? I mean, we're talking 12 dBs again here. It's like being smashed. This is a very transparent limiter. Also gives you great things like real-time dithering. Most of the time when you dither, you have to click a button and say, dither. Okay, but how do I know what it's doing? Here you can have, you can stretch to 16-bit and listen to different kinds of dither. Don't watch me go. So I can guarantee you that I can flip through all the dith dithers here and considering the noise, you will never hear what it does. But if you pay attention in your studio on good speakers, you will hear a difference between the different dithers and you can pick what you want. I use the adaptive one, this one, TPDF, whenever I use a dither. Um, but it's nice to be able to have a real-time dither system so you can hear what's going on. It's very good also for mixers because I guarantee you that at the end of the day when you give your mix to your singer and she's going to go put it in her iPod and she's going to call you the day after to complain that it's not as loud as the Britney Spears record or the Beyonce record you can you don't have to go through that you can say you can give them a limited loud version of your mix that you won't listen to but that's good enough for her to listen to in the realm of her songs it's a very practical <coughs> tool to have that at the end of the day with very little control you just go boom louder very nice <laughs> 